all countries focusing on the future technologies. We have amazing products coming out from machine learning, artificial intelligence, robotics and many more. So what is the future you see in this Indian startup? So the beauty of India is we were very people-centric people. You know, if you look at politicians, we worship politicians, you know, almost, especially so in southern India. Uh, I see that a lot. So uh, there is the human value along with technology that will give us an edge. If everything is automated, people are very unhappy and sad in their lives. They might show very happy faces on Instagram, but in their personal life, they're unhappy. So the more we can connect in the physical world and create relationships with each other and technology as an enabler, not an end-all be-all, I think that's what's going to be uh, because you know automation, driverless cars, all of these things lead to less people. But we find happiness only with our connection with other people. So that has to come in and that is happening through creators on social media. People are not watching movies so much. They're watching people, somebody they know on social media creating content either singing or dancing or motivation or whatever, right? So that's where things are changing. When Industrial Revolution happened, the, the radio industry, the TV industry, the, the sports industry blossomed. So with more automation, people are going to need more entertainment. People are need, going to need more uh, creators. And that's where we will see Indians being the brain, brainy people and the creative people that we are, that's going to give us a tremendous edge. Like even today, you know, you have a YouTube channel. YouTube in India gets more views than the entire world put together. What was the journey and was it easy at that, at that time? Nothing's easy. I mean, it's like banging your head against the wall and figuring out, I don't know this, I don't know everything. Everything is unknown. And the point is, I don't know, I want to know. Every point we were humble and we asked somebody who knew. And we've got mentors, we got professors to help us figure out, you know, unscramble those unknown things. And the best part was it was all free. The help we got from millionaires and billionaires, you know, they helped us figure out, key, this is how we did our mistakes, you don't do it. And that's why the 19 to 22, the journey was very short to a first million dollar business because we learned from the mistakes of people, you know, and we learned from their success also. And that's what I do, that's why I'm here. Uh, or, or almost every founder is at the age of 28, when taking the whole scenario in India, but only in that 9% percentage of women entrepreneurs. So how we evaluate the women in business or sheep owners in India? Uh, see, it's a, it's a big issue and I see that all the time. So women by nature are shy and society and religion and other things also kind of pushes them to be this and not this. And sometimes women have the wrong understanding that to be this I have to be a man. And that's not true. Women have their strength, men have their strength. A woman doesn't have to be a man to be uh, successful. So play on your strengths and then you will see that opportunities do open up. Right. Uh, so the issue is women, it's a lot of societal thing, but it's also the women, their own understanding and their own self-doubt that creates a lot of problem and the self-misunderstanding of what would make them successful. So uh, since we are dealing with that particular subject scale up, I would, ask, I would like to ask you one thing. Once a startup is scale up, is it the right time for them to go for the funding? Or is there any specific time to look funding for the startups? Mantra generally I give entrepreneurs, they start with zero money grow with your customers money and scale with investor money So the scale up phase is when you have already validated your model and you're going all out to capture the market before copycats come in and to capture the market you have to invest in marketing and sales and that's when you need venture capital that's when you need all the investment money you can get so yes that is the point when you take in all the money and go all out and take over the market so we would like to know more about that exclusive entrepreneurship education you are providing on the methodology of Gita <laughs> so, so there is lean startup methodology, that is a startup science, but also Gita aspect uh, is about management, about leadership, because according to Bhagavad Gita, Sattvic, Rajasic, Tamasic, right? Three different aspects. So, we have all three in different combinations. If you can understand that, you can understand who is motivated by what. So as a leader of the organization, you need to motivate, some are motivated by money, some are motivated by respect, some are motivated by knowledge. So who is on what mode, accordingly you can guide them. Gita also teaches you to control your anger because as an entrepreneur, you get so much rejections. Sometimes you get frustrated. But then in chapter 2, text 14, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that Matras Parshas Tukamtya, Shita Ushna, Shukha Dukhada. 
Agama Payo, Anityam, Tamsa Sixth Bharata. So, as soon as senses come in contact with sense objects, there's two options happiness or distress. I've designed the system such way after happiness comes distress, after distress comes happiness. So, the entrepreneur, if you know you're struggling and nobody's saying yes to you, know for a fact it's going to get better. But if you give up, you're dead. But if you continue with the struggle, only then you win. You're not letting failure come as an option even, because you're not quitting. Because you know after distress comes happiness. Kerala has a little less visibility than other places, but it doesn't matter. The point is, if you have technology, you have a laptop and internet, you can do whatever you do, wherever you do. So become visible. Uh, become socially visible on social media platforms, on media platforms. Do something so incredible people talk about you. Create unique bragging proposition. Build products that people feel, your customers feel so good about it, that they go tell other people, you should have this, this is the best thing ever, right? So unique bragging proposition. Um, growth hack, don't take no for an answer. Government is gonna say no, banks are gonna say no, investors are gonna say no, founders are gonna say no. So as an entrepreneur, learn to take a no to a maybe and push forward from maybe to yes. You negotiate at everything, you ask questions about everything, and that's how you get to a yes. And only because of that you succeed. Since you are talking about this digital era, what is the future of uh, channels like us to promote this entrepreneurship in our country? You are the future because see, people are going to watch less TV. TV channels are going to eventually die out. It's the YouTube channels and Instagram channels who are targeting niche audience, niche content. That's what people are watching with geo and penetration and tier two, tier three cities. Everybody's on YouTube, so it's you're the future. So. Today you might not see much value, but 10, 10, 20 years from now, all of this content that you're building is going to be evergreen content and people are going to, you know, you're going to have millions and your, your presence is going to be everything for startups.